I want to talk about the pleasure principle, what it is and what it means and how it should be applied to e-cigs. When last I spoke on this, um, across in Warsaw at the Global Forum on Nicotine, I spent four and a half minutes talking about it. I'm going to spend a little bit longer than that today. Um, the human condition is such that we seek pleasure, satisfaction, enjoyment, um, all of that kind of stuff in just about everything we do. If you have a relationship that doesn't give you any pleasure, you get out of it and you move on. If you seek to follow a particular diet, for argument's sake, and it doesn't give you any pleasure, then you tend to change the diet. Some people can get too much pleasure out of their diet. I could well be one of them. When it comes to everything that, that humans do, we tend to seek to do things in the most enjoyable way possible. So there are people who derive enormous pleasure out of walking for miles and miles and miles in all kinds of different places. There are people who derive pleasure from running in marathons or 100 yards or being faster than anybody else. There are people who derive pleasure from riding cycles and cycling everywhere because it gives them pleasure to think that they're being green and, and their carbon footprint is low and all of that kind of stuff. And that's all good. That's all good. I don't decry anybody doing anything for, for pleasure. Hedonism is not a nasty word. Um, so when it comes to e-cigs, we're talking about a situation where someone decides that they want to try e-cigs because they think it's going to give them pleasure. If that person is a smoker, then the e-cig is more of a carrot than a stick. So the idea is, if they can pick up something which will give them more pleasure than they got from smoking, then it's going to stop them from smoking. But here's the rub. Last year, I was talking to someone from Fresh North East, and we were talking about how you could advertise e-cigs, how you could do a 30-second snippet on the telly, um, whether it's BBC, ITV, Channel 4, wherever. You could do a 30-second snippet, how would you sell e-cigs? And my immediate reaction was, well, you could have five or six people all standing there going, I use e-cigs, all of the joys, none of the death. And they said, no, you can't do that. You can't do that because that then implies that there's pleasure to be had from smoking, that there is a positive from smoking. You need to understand this. If you're in tobacco control, if you're in the stop smoking services, it doesn't matter where you are, you need to understand that people get pleasure from smoking. Let me say that again. People get pleasure from smoking. It is a fact. It's not up for debate. It's not something you can bury. It is a fact. People wouldn't smoke if they didn't enjoy it. Now, I keep, in, I keep hearing bandied about that 70%, 80%, whatever percent of smokers want to quit. I would suggest that if that was the case, then the stop smoking services throughout the UK would see far more than the 10 to 13 percent of current smokers going to visit them that they currently see, if indeed it's that high. In fact, if 80 percent of smokers wanted to quit, 80 percent of current smokers would be visiting the stop smoking services even as we speak. Are they? I think we all know they're not. And the reason they're not is because they derive pleasure, enjoyment, satisfaction, fulfilment, call it whatever you like, but they derive some level of satisfaction from smoking. Now, for whatever reason, and I, I, I can't go into that because there's, what, nine million, nine and a half million smokers in the UK. I don't know each and every one of them, so I have no idea what their reasons are for smoking, but I can say quite categorically, they are deriving satisfaction from doing that. Now, whatever satisfaction it is, as I say, I don't know. People may not agree with it, 
but that's fine it's a fact it's there it's fairly obvious it can't be any different from that so how then do you persuade cajole not coerce how do you make it more attractive for a smoker to vape than to smoke simple invoke the pleasure principle this is not a stick to beat a smoker over the head with it is not a stick it's a carrot right and it's the honey you attract more flies with honey than you do with other things let's be careful how we put this if you can give a smoker a more attractive proposition than a cigarette then the likelihood is that that smoker is at very least going to try it and if it proves that what you've provided what is there is more pleasurable gives them more satisfaction gives them more enjoyment gives them more hedonic enjoyment if you want to put it that way then there's more likelihood that they're going to stick with it this is the pleasure principle so if you give a smoker something that is lacking in nicotine doesn't give them the nicotine hit they want it's not more enjoyable if it doesn't give them the throat hit they want it's not more enjoyable if it doesn't give them a flavor that they find more attractive than smoking then it's not more enjoyable and they're not going to stick with it so we've got to be able to one accept that a smoker enjoys smoking and two give them something which for them in every circumstance is more enjoyable than smoking now in my case it was quite simple it was the apple flavor of the otherwise quite wimpy device i first started with that i enjoyed and it, it was just a number of things now let me let me outline them for you one i did not like having to go out of places of entertainment or wherever it was I was out on a night I didn't like to have to go outside in the cold in the wet and the wind to have a cigarette so being able to vape indoors was more enjoyable that's the first one second one was that I enjoyed the flavor of the e-cig way more than I enjoyed the flavour of the cigarettes that I was smoking at the time. It was a more enjoyable flavour. I got more pleasure. So I was indoors, one. I got much more flavour and more enjoyable flavour. So there's, there's two points of pleasure. And there was a third point of pleasure as well. And I felt that in my wallet. And back in 2009, e-cigs weren't cheap but it was still cheaper then than it was to smoke. So three points of pleasure. I didn't have to go outside. The flavors were much more enjoyable and I was able to enjoy other things as well. My enjoyment quotient, if you like, was increased because I had more money. Now, that worked for me to the point where one day I forgot to take my cigarettes to work with me and I found that I was at least as happy as I was when I was smoking lit tobacco. So the pleasure principle played straight into the hands of people who wanted me not to smoke because I had no intention of quitting smoking. I simply found something, a way of getting nicotine, if you like, that was much more enjoyable than what I'd been doing prior. These days, of course, I'm not sure that I would have been able to do that in quite the same way. There would appear to be more places that have got idiotic vaping bans placed in them. Thankfully, Public Health England has now said it's probably not a good idea and their guidance kind of errs towards, look, you should allow it. Neither following TPD regulation will I be able to get the amount of nicotine in a small and not massively foggy device that would allow me to go mouth to lung and, and you know, be acceptable if you like. Um, so it's less easy. However, it's still possible to do. So if, if you're talking to somebody 
who is looking to make the switch from tobacco cigarettes to vaping then what you've got to do is find what is going to give them more pleasure now there is an issue here or some people see an issue here it's not one i see but the issue that they see is if we make e-cigs very attractive very pleasurable tasty satisfying hedonic if you will then people who don't smoke might take them up well there is no might people who don't smoke will take them up they will but those are the very people who would probably also take up smoking in other words we're not likely to see a hundred percent of the adult or no let's be honest about this we're not going to see a hundred percent of everybody in the country aged 12 or over taking up vaping it's just not going to happen because for an awful lot of people they wouldn't derive any pleasure out of it no matter how pleasurable the folks who do take it up see it and you've got to accept that i accept it so we're not going to see 100 percent of the population vaping it just isn't going to happen there are too many people scared of new things for that to be the case but if all right let's let what is it we're around about 18 percent smoking and it's around about five no it's less than that five but less than five percent vaping but let's say that, that there's there's let's say there's 25 percent of the population either smoke or vape if that was to rise to 45 percent and everybody was vaping does it cause a problem well actually no it doesn't um we're not going to see the levels of of damage and harm from vaping that you would see from smoking so actually it isn't a problem and if you have a problem with people enjoying themselves then i su suggest it's you that's got the problem not them in other words if we apply the pleasure pleasure principle if we allow people to find something that is enjoyable for them and that diverts them away from smoking either by switching or because they never start but they vape instead then that's a good thing the pleasure principle is the carrot which brings with it a massive public health dividend and i think everybody needs to accept that if we invoke the pleasure principle if we let allow people to enjoy vaping then I think the end game that tobacco controllers are consistently looking for will happen of its own volition. So throw the stick away, hide the stick, disappear the stick, get rid of the stick and let's have the carrot, a lot of the carrot. Let's make ASICs very widely available, very widely promoted, acknowledged to be pleasurable and just accepted everywhere if we do that with no other provisos if we allow the pleasure principle free reign then everybody gets what they want that's got to be a good thing hasn't it thanks for listening